Hello again YouTube, this is Mido D. Green here and I am going to do something a little bit different today. This is not going to be a Super Sentai tour review. This is going to be a review of the Mystic Knights of Tierner Nog. Maybe you've heard of it, maybe you haven't. But it's alright, it was only one season on Fox Kids back in 1997 I believe. So these figures are more than 20 years old and they all still look pretty pretty good if you ask me so here we have the original five cast members there were a, not original originally there were four mystic knights and then halfway through the season there was a fifth mystic knight that was introduced so here they all are and we are going to discuss each and every one of them individually so let's start with the packaging. Uh, so they all come in a package similar to this. So we have Rohan, the Mystic Knight of Fire. Here's his setup. He has all of his accessories. Here we are, Mystic Knights of Tyrion and Og. So here we have the original four. This fifth guy comes in later. And on the back we have the villains that they all had to fight in order to have their armor given to them or awarded to them sorry awarded and here's some other things some other toys there we go with the fire within him here is Rohan it's looking pretty good the gold paint has really held up over the past two decades this helmet is very interesting. At least I think it's interesting how the the dragon on top is spitting out the fire. The red and the gold look really good together. They go very well together. Oh, can't see that. So here we have some fire on his gloves over here. There's another dragon here on his forearm. So for articulation, all the figures pretty much have the same level of articulation. So we have the head, the shoulders can almost make a 360 degree rotation. We have elbows, wrists, no waist, legs can go up about that much go up about that go back about that much so we have knee swivel and knees no foot articulation and there is Rohan Rohan is the team leader he comes packaged with his sword the sword of Kells looks really awesome so Rohan as the team leader has a very interesting backstory he and the others are supposed to find a man a warrior by the name of Draganta who is going to bring peace to the land of Temra and Kells so he was adopted or orphaned at a young age and then he realizes as an adult that his mother his birth mother is the queen of Temra so he is it's later revealed that he is Draganta and that he is going to bring peace to Kells and Temra by taking over Temra and by taking over also Kells by marrying someone I'll talk about her later I don't know, does that make any sense? I don't even know anymore. But that's how the story went and that's how the story ended because they only had one season. So keeping up with the order of the warriors who received their armors, the second one to receive her armor after Rohan was Princess Deirdre. With the air above her, here we have the Mystic Knight of Air. So here is Princess Deirdre. I think I'm going to turn off this light because she's being washed out. Here we 
here we are. I really like her aesthetics, the wings give a nice little nod to being able to fly. So for her articulation we have the head can rotate, no waist, full shoulder rot rotation, bicep swivel, elbow joint, wrist swivel, legs can go up about this far, back this far, have knee swivel here, actual knee joint, and no foot or ankle articulation. So Princess Deirdre is the Princess of Kells. She's next in line for the crown because she is her father's only child. So she will soon be queen who will potentially need a king. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. So here she is. And she is packaged here with her whirlwind crossbow. Turn the light back on. There we go. More wings. More, more air aesthetics. Next up in line is a prince from a far, far away land. So with the water around him, this is Prince Ivar. Another, another amazing figure. Nice, shiny, metallic blue. Yeah. This is sort of like a more flat red. The gold is shinier than the red. But this one is the reverse. The gold is kind of flat, but then the blue is really, really shiny. So here on the chest, you have this water dragon who's spitting out water. Lots and lots of water accents all over. There's another dragon on his forearm. And the horns. The detailing in the back is amazing too. Eh. Gosh. So with him, he is packaged with his barbed trident. Here we are. More aquatic symbols. Fish all around. It's the longest one out of all of them because it's sort of like a, a lance type of weapon. So Prince Ivar's story is he has traveled to Kells in search of a thief who has stolen a chalice from his kingdom that he is desperate to try and retrieve for some reason. I guess they had to find some type of reason for this African American man to be in this area that's populated by a large majority of white people. So. Don't mean to bring race into the into this review, but it is what it is. He's the only African American member on the team. Or, or allow me to rephrase: He's the only member of the team who is of African descent. He may not be American. He may be some other nationality, but he is definitely of African descent. He's the only black one on the team. Next up is an unlikely character. And we will get to him right now. So with the earth beneath him, this is Angus. Angus is not royalty. He is just the best buddy slash best friend of Rohan. And he looks pretty, pretty good. I like the silver and the gold together. And you can see all over all of the, uh, let me turn off the backlight. Hopefully you can see it better. All of the mountain motifs that are all over this guy. There's another one, another mountain hill. Another one. He's very well put together. Turn this 
back on. Alright, so other than him being the best friend of the team leader, there's no real storyline for this guy. He's just he's just the best buddy of the guy who is supposed to save these two kingdoms and bring them together in harmony. So Angus comes packaged with his Terra Sling Mace. It's packaged like this. It's supposed to look like this. But you know me, I didn't want to leave it like this, so I changed it. So I just cut off the middle piece and kept the two end pieces and put a metal chain in the middle. Just makes it more authentic, more realistic to the show. Just a little side note, all of these weapons that are being discussed are all projectile weapons except for the mace. The mace is a, also a projectile weapon, but when Angus knocks it against the ground, it creates earthquakes. I guess all of the weapons could have a secondary power, but we didn't really go that far into the show to figure out if any of these other weapons have any type of secondary abilities. So last but not least, the fifth member of the team is going to show up right about now. And with the forest before him, we have Prince Garrett. Prince Garrett comes packaged with his twin timber axis. So here's one, and then here's two. All the weapons fit their motifs. To the T, of course, they have to. And here is Garrett. Looking quite nice in this gold slash shiny bronze type of color. And then once again, you can see all over. Let me turn this light off. Let me see now. Once again, all over him, you see all of these different types of leaf designs. There's a leaf. There is a leaf. Everywhere where you look, there's a leaf. <laughs> so, he has the ability to put these up. Sometimes they stay up, sometimes they don't. This one's this one goes up as well. This one can swing out. So can this one. And here we have another dragon on his forearm. So Garrett is yet another prince. So there's technically three princes on this team right now, and one princess. So Garrett comes from another distant land that's next to Kells and from his storyline he was betrothed to be married to Deirdre to her surprise and I don't believe that she wants to marry Garrett I believe that she wanted to marry Rohan we don't really figure out which one she's romantically inclined to but I don't believe that she's really feeling Garrett all that much she didn't really understand him and she didn't really trust him at first. I don't think anyone, any of them really trusted him at first before he eventually joined the team. Come to think about it now, this seems very odd seeing as how all of these people seem to have different abilities and different specialties and different identities. So am I to understand that maybe Saban was trying to create a live action version of King Arthur and the Knights of the Round Table? because Garrett ends up leaving. He, he's able to keep the powers that he has, but he doesn't stay on the show for long. He's on the show for a little while and then he leaves and then he comes back. So can this happen with other people? Like all, of, all over England, there can be different mystic knights of different elements and then they all come together with Rohan being the king of everyone. I don't know, this is just me overthinking things. 
I really am glad that I picked this set up because this set was truly hard to find in good working order. And hopefully you enjoyed my review. And if you did, please comment below, like and subscribe, please, if you care. And I will talk to you all later.